This video was supposed to come out before the fourth season started, but oh well, at least now I have some concrete comparisons to make with what we've seen so far, and not just educated guesses. So, Demon Slayer, one of the newer shonen sensations and arguably the biggest in recent memory, but it hasn't all been smooth sailing for poor old Tanjiro, and no, the rockiness of the road cannot all be credited to the mere existence of Zenitsu, as the whiny bastard cannot alone ruin a good thing. The thing with Demon Slayer is that while it has had some of the highest highs in terms of sales and, well, general success, with the likes of Mugen Train and the Entertainment District arc, the first season wasn't all that great. More specifically, not before episode 19 hit. But where the title of this video stems from is not in the dawn of an era, but in the most recent adaptation that is yet to grace our eyes with its presence. At least it would be that way had I got on this damn video out in time. But yes, anyway, the third season of Demon Slayer was, let's just say, disappointing, and that left a very sour taste in the mouth of many a fan, which isn't boding well for the now airing fourth season. The simple thing is that in the modern competitive world one mistake can be all it takes, and the Swordsmith Village arc was one hell of a big mistake, but this is not really the time to dive into why that is, mainly since I've already talked about it in more detail in a video of its own that you can find up here and linked in the pinned comment. I've also previously done a deep dive into the pre-season 3 Age of Demon Slayer, which I will also link if people are interested in a more review style take on the whole of Demon Slayer. But back on topic of the fourth and most recent season, and what it might mean for the future of the franchise as a whole, and since surprise surprise, it's not fully out yet, I did something unprecedented for this video. I read the manga. Yes, I know, shocking. But while I might not be the biggest manga reader, since, you know, I read a lot of other things... But the vows of unibooks draining my will to live and read anything with words in it aside, finally Demon Slayer. Fuck, it took me long to get here. And yeah, looks good. That's it, video done, go home or whatever. Oh, yep, still here. <clears throat> okay, fine, I tell you why it might not yet be time to put Demon Slayer six feet under while singing... <laughs> through our tears. Okay, the third season was not great, and while some of its issues stemmed from its purpose in the wider story, which was more or less inevitable, yes, I could sit here and pretend that I know of a better way to write a story, but the fact is that I don't, and that's why I review stuff and not write my own, since I'm a moron too hung up on my own ineptitude to do any actual creative writing, so I pretend my education gives me some level of expertise in picking apart other people's works. <clears throat> anyway... Now that we've established that, what makes me say that Season 4 might be different? Well, first of all, because it is different, in more ways than one. Up to this point, Demon Slayer has been about fighting, well, demons. We even have the nice and conveniently ordered list of upper moons and increasing levels of power, mostly. <laughs> for Tanjiro and gang to face off to, but not anymore. The order is gone. Nezuko can remember Inosuke's name, and Gyu is still not like the other girls. Long story short, the Hashira training arc is about training, not fighting. Well, at least not fighting the demons. It's more punch Tanjiro in his very punchable face, besides we all love a good training arc, since it's not like any shonen ever would have done it before ever. What? Okay, fine, yes. I like to make fun of shows following the great Sean and template in the sky and doing the same shit over and over again, but the fact is, it works. I may not like it, but it works, and I too am allowed to be a basic bitch at times, and I just happen to like a good training arc, especially if it involves Tanjiro being punched in the face. But my likes and dislikes aren't exactly relevant in the grand scheme of things, even if many a YouTuber like to pretend that they're infallible and theirs is the word of God, but that's simply not the case. So why do I think that this might be the breath of fresh air that Demon Slayer needs? Well, to put it simply, because it's different. Not in the sense of being something new or inventive in the general shonen world, but because it's a pacing duel. So far we've had three seasons and a movie of nothing but increasingly powerful demons piling up on one another, and to be fair, 
it started to get a little stale, which partially contributed to the lackluster third season. Now we're turning things back, exploring the history of the Demon Slayers and getting a sneak peek into what goes on in the minds of the Hashira, you could say that it's the calm before the storm to abuse an obnoxiously overdone metaphor. But so far at least, it's done exactly what it should. It's dialing shit down a few pegs, while still not being boring since, if I'm being honest, this wasn't the most interesting part of the manga, and I was pleasantly surprised to see the anime took some liberties to sneak in some action, and not just running up and down a mountain over and over again. And now that I am nicely contradicting my previous point about how this is calm, I feel like I need to explain why I think adding action to what is supposed to be chill is a good thing. Exhibit A. This is still a shonen anime, and fans expect some form of sword swinging to be involved. Exhibit B, while there is some Hashira-based action, by and large this isn't Demon Slayer, flashy, hyper, mega, uber, I've run out of words for super. Anyway, this isn't that kind of over-the-top animation. It's clean swordplay that still feels like training, but at the same time, it also feels like Demon Slayer. And I think UFO Table managed to find a great balance point here. For reference, Episode 3 was probably the best one of the season yet, and it's four panels in the manga. All of that night training was added on. And finally, Exhibit C. Yes, we got some Hashira stuff as well, but that was sort of necessary for the opening episode since it was shown in theatres and all that. Got to chase the bag, you know. But speaking of the first episode, the hour-long special, or at least almost an hour long, this was something I specifically took issue with with the third season opening, but I like this one, so what gives? Well, again, I've dove into this in more detail in the third season breakdown video, but the TLDR is that that opening felt like a cash grab. It was full of essentially needless eye candy that only served to pander the length of the episode with no real substance. And while that looks great on the big screen with all the hype in the world going on, it's just flat and meaningless when viewed again, or even from a small screen at home. The fourth season one, on the other hand, was just substance. There was flashy animation with the introduction of the two Hashira, but that was simply because it was expected of the show. Otherwise, it was just the coherent story bit that needed the extra amount of time and set the scene for what is to follow. Sure, it probably failed to carry the impact of the third season opening episode if viewed in the cinema, but as a part of a greater whole, it worked a hell of a lot better. So, all in all, I am carefully optimistic for the fourth season of Demon Slayer. What we've seen so far looks promising, and the arc as a whole is cool. Is it an entire season's worth of cool? Possibly not as it's in the manga, but if UFO Table keeps on going like they have so far, it might yet be exactly what Demon Slayer needs. It might not be what all fans want, but sometimes you just got to look back a bit and think to yourself, just why was the third season so astronomically shite? And only then you can decide on how to move forward in a meaningful way. And I feel like that's what's happening here. And if I'm wrong and all of this just crashes and burns, well, I'll be here making a new video, pointing and laughing at how it failed. But if not, well, I'll still be here telling people I told you so. And with that, thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed that. If you did do all of the YouTube things of likes and comments and subscribes, this is also where I would put a shout out for my channel members if I had any. So uh, if you would like to have your name here at the end of videos, please do become a channel member. You'll also get access to the content early. I would like to make them ad free for members, but unfortunately YouTube doesn't allow that. But there might be a Patreon for that later or down the line. We shall see. I need to look into the legalities of Patreon in terms of Finnish law because it's a bit hazy. Anyway, with this, I have been Cheese, and I'll see you next time with more anime goodness. Ta-ta for now.